We're back for our weekly review shows. We just did Raw and SmackDown. Now we're on to 205 Live and NXT. Joe, let's go to 205. Uh, first one, 205. Or NXT, I'm not sure. 205. 205. Uh, Allen defeated the Brian Kendrick. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a good match from the two. Uh, uh, so surprisingly, it's, it was a longer opening match for 205 Live. Usually, they're kept a little short to give the main event a, a little more time. Right. Uh, so it, it is a nice change of pace, and I thought uh, Tuzala and Kendrick did very well together. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, the big story match is that Tuzala should have a new aggressive siphon after Gla uh, Galher and Kendrick talked him last week. And that uh, they... Uh, Beat a jobber? Okay. Yeah. He, he did beat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I really can't remember the comments now. He defeated Hanson Town and then uh, he he was doing his respecting bit and then Mustafa Ali returned and he backed out from him. Yes. So, so the grand hero of 205 Live returns. Yes. Uh, and then the workhorse of 205 Live defeated Kalisa in the main event. Yeah. Uh, to me, that one match may have been match. Of the week for me. Okay, fine, I'll give you that. That was uh, my second match of the week. Yeah. Uh, Kalisto and uh, Buddy Murphy I, I worked excellent together before. Uh, and I thought they pulled a hell of a show here. Um, I, and I thought it's probably... And I think it's continuing the pace of great 205 Live main events again. Like, we're on that back on that streak where we're not just after the uh, Murphy-Mustafa uh, yeah. match. And, and we're, we're like, okay, concept. everything's not, not as bright as it used to be. But I think we're actually getting back. And surprisingly, it's with Murphy. Uh, they may have to go ahead and... Yeah, that, that's a surprise. Yeah. Though I've been calling it since, like, January, February. But yeah, that, that's a surprise. You, you realize that's a little bit more sarcastic. So Saying that he should probably... He actually should probably be somewhere at the top of the division. Well, hopefully by the end of Super Showdown, he is the top of the division. Yes. So he's going to cruise like championship match. Sure. Uh, although, although he probably isn't because they're still setting up Gulak versus uh, Cedric. That's a good sign. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, it was a very good match. For some reason, I wanted to say Mark Andrews there. I don't know why. <laughs> They look like uh, I, I think it's because both their names end in an A. There you go. But yeah, that's a good sign for Cedric. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, it was a very good match. Uh, Murphy continues his uh, add to his resume. Yeah. To maybe make a case for most improved wrestler year. Yeah. I say maybe because there's some people near him. And his moniker may hold even true of, of being the best kept secret in WWE. Yeah. Uh. NXT kicked off with Giant Gargano coming out and apologizing to the fans and sent out then he didn't know what was next for him. Uh, Real came out to accuse him. No, not accuse him. Question him on attacking Alistair and then uh, he made not to and then Velveteen came out and they set up a match for next week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm highly looking forward to Velveteen versus Gargano again. Oh, yeah. Um... Uh, but yeah, Johnny, you see another facet of his character where he's at the point where he's literally been beaten twice in a row by Ciampa. Yes. And he literally saw, seen him become NXT champion right under his nose. And largely because of him as well. Uh, so we, we got to see that side of Gargano, of being a little bit more sympathetic. Uh, he, he is going to be the obvious kayfabe suspect candidate for attacking Alistair. Oh, yeah. But usually, especially in WWE, that's never that person. No. Uh, unless it's, like, blatantly obvious where he's, like, under a mask and you see the attack. Yeah, yeah, uh, But it's, it's never really that per that person you think that they're trying to show you it is. Um, so the, that story continues throughout the show this week. Um, and I thought it was an excellent opening promo. Yeah, I thought it was an excellent promo to start off with. Uh, does that as usual for send stuff out, out next week? Uh, and now I don't think it's either guy that attacked Alistair. Uh, up next, uh, Kodakai defeated Leah. 
Uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was the uh, typical showcase for Dakota Kai, who, who is always great. And uh, Aliyah knows how to take an ass with him. Poor Aliyah. Her, her career is dying. The more you watch her come out, the more you just know she's going to get released. And then she's going to become the biggest star on the indie scene. I think they're holding on to her because she's still relatively young. She's practically a grandma on NXT or so. Isn't she like 20? 20, 21, yeah. Uh, so she's practically a grandma on NXT. Yeah, uh, D sent off match though and got to come back on the winning side of things. And they actually might be waiting for her to actually develop a character and actually use. Uh, up next, La... Lars Sullivan, the short Raul Mendoza, who was just taking C3 by Lars Sullivan late time out. Yeah. Backstage. Uh, we get the return of Lars Sullivan. Um, it, it's good to see him back, and he pretty much reminded everybody how destructive he is. Yeah. Uh, I think he's the one who took out EC3. Uh, yeah, said. especially when he was just walking and he said, away from it, yes. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to push him as the attacker of the Alistair, because... But I'm pretty sure it's not him. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably Nikki Cross. Uh. Up next, Keith. Keith Lee defeated Luke Menzies. Uh, I thought that this was a much better showing. Yeah. Of Keith Lee and showcasing him. Mm hmm. Uh. You have to see a little bit more of who he is and what his offense is so you can buy into him later. Uh, so. So in all, I think this probably should have been his first match. I agree. Instead of uh, trying to make it a little bit more even for his first match. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what the first one should have been. More of a showcase for him. Yeah. Yeah, not, not going 50-50 with uh, Marcel Barthel. Who seemed like somebody else he wanted to push. Yeah. Yeah, so. But well, this is a good showcase for him. I'll get him into a few to Ryder soon. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you don't get too many guys like that. That could do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh... And the main event, the other two hour defeat Ricochet and Paul, and Pete Dunne. Not Paul uh, Probably another contender for match of the week. Yeah. Uh, you, you you literally put anybody in the NXT, not main event, but just under that, you're gonna get great matches weekly. Oh. Uh, and in this case, it's no exception with Pete Dunne, Ricochet, Roderick Strong, and Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. Um, good, good stuff all around, and continue, and that even added in uh War Raiders, mm. a little bit more into interacting with everybody that wasn't the undisputed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it was a great match, to great tag match. The right team won. Pete Dunne and Ricochet had some miscommunication. I'm looking forward to their more likely future match on TV in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then War Raiders kind of for save sets up War Games. For War Raiders and Ricochet versus British Strong Style versus uh, versus Undisputed Era. I don't necessarily think it's going to be split down like that. I'm pretty sure it's going to be. I don't think it is. Well, who is it? Okay, thank I don't you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking partially, since the War Raiders are not necessarily going against Pete Dunne with Ricochet, or Pete Dunne's not going to necessarily against them. That it's this time it's not going to be three teams against each other. It's going to be two teams against each other. Unspewed era. I'm going to guess Bobby Fish comes comes back really soon from injury. Okay. Uh, they may pick up a another person. They may add a fifth member in, on Undisputed. I mean, we still got two months to do that. Uh, and obviously, it's going to be. Uh, War Raiders, Pete Dunne, and Ricochet, maybe a fifth person. Mm, that could work. I'm pretty sure it's three on four. four. Yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. Uh, 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 I'm trying not to say who who I think it would be because I, I've seen a Cassie picture Zono, and I don't necessarily want to spoil it. Cassie Zono, I think, is going to be one of the fifth men from the next few hours. That's what I'm saying. And then you, you, thought it, you just started. Ten minutes ago, it was three. Well, no, going by, going by your unorthodox theory, where I'm just helping you add to it. If there's going to be a ten-man, 
I don't know, will be the fifth guy on that side. I'm not really sure. It may be somebody from all in. Who knows? They know who I think is going. Who will be though if they go that unorthodox theory? Like, Owens. Hmm. All right. <sighs> No, that's right. there, there actually is precedent before that too because they had Owens at TakeOver uh, well, actually may have been the last War Games in the Undisputed Era in the Undisputed Era shirt so yeah. yeah so yeah so I did think about your unorthodox complicated theory you know his is really all that complicated because WCW did that one but yeah. uh, it's complicated when it's coming from him yeah uh, See, I thought originally you weren't adding the Warriors in the match when you guys said that. I thought you were talking about Ricochet team on the British Strong style. No. Now that I just put Warriors in, it makes more sense. I was going to be like, they're not going to leave Warriors out on the cold. It's just like a few of them to speed it. No, they may use uh, Must- Pete Dunne and Trent Seven to add it, add to another match. Or add another match at uh, TakeOver. Take yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were leaving. But I do, because they literally threw them aside. But they didn't throw them aside. The feud was over. Three yeah. matches. Well, well, not thrown aside in, in that <laughs> aspect where like, just like get out of here. It was more or less they had them move aside and more Raiders came out and attacked. Yeah, I thought you were saying more Raiders was going to be left out. I was going to say they're no. not going to be left out. No, 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 they're not. Yeah. Uh, then the. Uh, so, Botch of the Week? Uh, Botch of the Week. Okay, let's see. The Colognes losing on their return. No, okay. This is one of the weeks where I'm just going to go raw. Just because I thought the other three shows were pretty much on completely on another level. Uh, Raw had one or two things that were really, that were good that stood out. Uh, but the rest of the show just felt like filler. Like they weren't actually trying to build anything, that they were just throwing things on the screen to fill three hours. I'm going to go with Rhonda. Uh, her not doing anything, really? Yeah, she's starting to feel like a diva. Uh. Yeah, I, I kind of see what you mean there. She's not the necessarily the person that you just throw out there just to have her out there. Yeah. Uh, it sort of takes away a little bit of her aura away and, and sort of cheapens her a little bit. Yeah, especially when arguably the hottest woman in the company. I mean, that, well, yeah, she's the hottest woman in the company. But arguably the hottest wrestler in the company right now is a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but it also helps that she's the hottest woman in the company. You see how that works? Ah! Uh, <laughs> she's going to be the hottest woman until he sees the next woman. That she's on the same brand as Alina. See, <laughs> <laughs> Zelina is the hottest manager in the company. There we go. Okay. But she's also the same brand as Renee too, who works both brands. You see, I I know how his mind works. I've I've known this gentleman for over ten years. Yeah, but I'm sick of Becky. Especially the look, the way she looks now as a heel. So the way she looks down, cause she she wears her hair down now. She wears dark clothing too. Yeah. She said to her face like by a few weeks now. Uh they so they're so changed of course. Uh yeah, uh, I, I I have the seeking suspicion that there's there's gonna be a double turn soon. Uh show of the week. Uh show of the week for me, I do have it. Alright, one, two, three, two, two or five, five live. Five. Yeah, I just thought all their matches... Set were, stuff up. Yeah, set something up. Yeah. Uh, well, SmackDown and NXT were both good. I just felt like 2 of 5 Live put a complete package together for, to enjoy. Because you put Carmel in the main event, that's your problem. Uh, well, that's the problem. You should main event with your best match, then, you could, then SmackDown might be able to win. If they main event with Brian Andrade into the Mizzou Race segment, then... There's a good chance that could win. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a little out of word between the woman's match and Brian Andrade. Just supposed to top of the bottom of the second hour. But they close Hino with Becky, so there's that. Uh, that's it for this on Monday. We we have 
our special Labor Day episode, which we're doing a lot of special things. Yes. Nothing. But <laughs> it will be filmed during the day. Yeah, kind of like now. Right. You see? There, there's a window over there. It's late. Yeah, so. <clears throat> WrestleMania 24, Retro Radio, Monday Night War Week 7, and Q&A. Q&A. So that's, and a little review coming. Well, we're taping it tonight. Right, so see you then. See you then.